The ThinkPad P16 Gen 2 is Lenovo's flagship mobile workstation. In traditional workstation fashion, it's heavy and big to support desktop level 13th Gen HX processors and NVIDIA's ADA graphics chips. Heavy duty cooling to keep thermals down an additional upgrade option. Up to 192 gigabytes of memory and eight terabytes of storage. Is it enough to keep it top of the pile? Let's find out. <music> The casing has a distinctive two-tone color scheme, storm gray for the display lid and keyboard deck, villa black for the bottom cover and screen bezels. The rear is broken by a ThinkPad red stripe underneath the vents and ports. The display lid has the ubiquitous ThinkPad red dot lighting up when it's on. The chassis is military standard 810H tested. The bottom cover is made of polycarbonate and strengthened with magnesium. The screen lid is made of aluminium and strengthened with magnesium. Starting at 2.95 kilograms or 6.5 pounds, it is built like a tank and feels like one. There's no flexing on the keyboard deck and excellent protection on the display lid. There's a large group of vents at the bottom to extract the cold air up. Heavy duty rubber feet around the main vent area aid in pushing more air in. There's dual ventilation slots at the rear to maintain the outgoing airflow to dissipate the hot air. Quick mention on the green credentials of the P16, which I would give a B score. Here is a list of the recycled or environmentally used materials on the P16. The upgrade options are housed and separated in two main areas on the P16. Two memory slots and an SSD slot when you open the service cover. Undo the one captive screw to reveal this area. The other two memory slots, M.2 SSD slot and optional W WAN card are hidden underneath the keyboard. Undo two screws underneath, carefully pry open the keyboard and release the two ribbon cables attached to reveal the slots. Four DDR5 sodium slots, dual channel capable in total. Models with non-ECC memory, up to 192 gigabytes, four times 48 gigabytes sodium DDR5 5600. Up to two PCIe 4x M.2 SSDs, 4TB each for a total of 8TB storage capacity. RAID 01 is supported. To replace the 94Wh battery, undo the 9 screws on the bottom cover and pry open. This review model has a 16-inch WQXGA 2560x1600 IPS anti-glare matte screen. Color gamut at 100% sRGB is fine for general usage or light photo or video editing work. Brightness is rated at 500 nits. Great if you're working near sunny window or bright indoor lighting. Outdoors, it is viewable on a cloudy day or shaded area. This panel is great to use for long hours thanks to iSafe certified 2.0 and the low blue light option. The display panel is fairly fast for IPS screen and the rapid refresh rate of 165Hz makes it usable for gaming or applications that make use of it. The display panel is connected to a chassis by dual hinges. Hardly any wobbling on the lid and it can be opened to 180 degrees flat. The display lid can easily be opened with one hand thanks to the bottom heavy chassis. Tip: There are several display options with the P16. For those needing a wider color gamut, the 4K 800 nits 100% DCI P3 matte panel might be a better choice, or the 4K OLED 400 nits 100% DCI P3 touchscreen version with a pen if you need this feature. On the left we have a USB-A 10 gigabits per second always on, USB-C 10 gigabits per second data transfer only, headphone microphone combo jack 3.5 mm and nano sim card slot on the right we have a kensington nano security slot usb a 5 gigabits per second sd express 7.0 card reader and a smart card reader at the back we have a power connector two thunderbolt 4 ports 40 gigs per second supporting data transfer power delivery 3.0 and display port 1.4 and a hdmi 2.1 up to 8k 60 hertz inside is an intel wi-fi 6e AX211, 11AX2x2 and Bluetooth 5.3 combo card. Wireless connectivity was strong and reliable throughout testing. Bluetooth connections were the same, reliable to external mouse or speaker. There is an optional WAN 4G LTE card and nano SIM slot for mobile internet connectivity. The keyboard on the P16 is one of the best typing experiences out there. 1.5mm of key travel, well spaced out and mainly full size keys like the enter, delete and arrow keys. Using the keyboard is precise, smooth and tactile while touch typing. There's two levels of backlighting on the keys and a full size numeric keypad. The excellent keyboard takes full advantage of the bulky chassis dimensions. F10 and F11 
are two shortcut keys to start a Teams call. F12 is a smart key to customize the opening of an app, website, file, or folder. The touchpad dimensions have not changed from its predecessor. It's made of a smooth plastic and works well for smooth finger gliding. Strange at this high price point that it's not made of glass. The integrated buttons are tactile and make a clicky noise when depressed. Of course, it's not a ThinkPad without the track point red nip and additional track point buttons, giving another option to move the pointer in tight spaces or wearing gloves. The top firing stereo 2 watts twin speakers are tuned by Adobe Atmos. Audio fidelity is average at best. Volume is adequate in a quiet room, but will struggle in loud environments. Mids and highs are good, but bass is lacking. Here are some audio samples. The webcam is a 1080p IR hybrid camera with a privacy shutter and human presence detection. There were two microphones situated either side of the webcam. Video quality is like the speakers, average at best. In good lighting conditions, it is fine for a Teams or Zooms call. On a cloudy day or poor lighting conditions, video quality degrades significantly. This review model has an Intel Core i7-13850HX processor based on the Raptor Lake series. It combines 20 calls and 28 threads, 8 Raptor Cove performance calls or P calls and 12 Grace Mond efficiency calls or E calls without hyperthreading. The P calls are clocked from 2.1 GHz to 5.3 GHz turbo boost. The E calls are clocked at 1.5 GHz base to 3.8 GHz boost. Minimum power consumption is 45 watts. Base TDP is 55 watts and the maximum turbo power consumption is 157 watts. Along with two 32 GB of DDR5 5600 sodium memory modules and a 1 TB SSD M.2 2280 PCIe. 4x4 performance NVMe OPA 2.0 storage drive. The P16 naturally powers through everyday tasks with ease, from complex spreadsheets, C++ coding, video editing to 3D modeling on it. For a benchmark test, we set the best performance mode in Windows and plug the laptop into the mains during testing. Here are the benchmarking results for the ThinkPad P16 Gen 2. 3D Mark Time Spy results came in with an overall score of 13,626, CPU score 14,207, and a graphics score of 13,500 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme overall came in at 6,388, graphics score of 6,369, and a CPU score of 6,503. 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra results came in with an overall score of 8,284, graphics score of 8,124, physics score of 29,253, and a combined score of 4,300. 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme results came in with an overall score of 16,211, graphics score of 16,714. Physics score of 31,676 and a combined score of 8,281. 3D Mark Port Royal score came in with 7,857. 3D Mark Speedway score of 3,623. Cinebench 2024 testing produced a score in multi core of 1,075 and 111 in single core. PC Mark 10 had an overall score of 7,713. PC Mark 10 Extended had an overall score of 10,657. Superposition resulted in a score of 27,119. Geekbench 6.2.2 CPU Benchmark resulted in a single core score of 2,591 and 14,873 in multi-core. The GPU Compute Benchmark results came in with a score of 145,869. Blender version 4.0 benchmark had a score of 285.38 for the i7-13850HX. For the RTX 3500 ADA, the Blender score was 5,071.45. Here is a comparison with the HP ZBook Studio G10 and Lenovo ThinkPad P1 Gen 6 mobile workstation. The Intel i7-13850HX sits close to its rival, the AMD Ryzen 7845HX above the Intel i9-13900H and just over 15% behind the newer Intel i9-14900HX in multi-core performance benchmarking scores. Running Cinebench 2024 mains best performance. Temperature is 39 Celsius by the vents, 33 Celsius by the keyboard deck. Fans do get loud at 55 decibels. Using the quick CPU tool plugged in balance mode idle. CPU temperature is around 40 Celsius. CPU clock speed is around 1.49 gigahertz on the E cores and 1.83 GHz on the P cores. CPU power is 7.64 watts on average. 
On startup, the fans spin up fast for a few seconds and then spin slowly at 34 to 36 decibels with a quiet humming sound. With video playback balance mode, the i7 13850HX CPU temperature is at 75 Celsius on average, 2 to 2.5 GHz on the E cores, and 3 to 4 GHz on the P cores, 35 watts CPU power on average. The dual fans stay relatively quiet at 40 decibels and the temperature at the vents is 34.4 Celsius. Set to high performance plugged in running spec view perf benchmarking. The CPU fluctuates between 3 to 3.8 gigahertz. CPU temperature is around 89 Celsius and CPU power is constant at 100 watts. The fans do kick in faster at 50.5 decibels. Temperatures around the vents is 39 Celsius, 35 Celsius to 37 Celsius at most on the keyboard deck. Set to high performance plugged in running Blender benchmarking. The CPU fluctuates between 2.8 gigahertz on the E cores and 3.5 gigahertz on the P cores. CPU temperature is around 100 Celsius and CPU power is around 77 to 85 watts on average. The fans do kick faster and louder at 55.8 decibels. Temperatures around the vents is 35 Celsius. In battery and balance mode, video playback, the CPU power is 10 watts on average. Clock speed is 1.5 gigahertz on the E cores and 2 gigahertz on the P cores and CPU temperature of 42 Celsius. The fans stay virtually silent and chassis temperatures hit 26 Celsius at most. Same can be said when running the Blender benchmark under battery mode, best performance. The CPU is throttled down to keep temperatures down to the detriment of performance. CPU power is 65 4 watts, 2.5 GHz on the E cores and 3 GHz clock speed on the P cores, and CPU temperature of 82 to 89 Celsius. The dual fans come on for a short burst of 54 decibels. The vapor chamber do keep the fan noise and temperatures down when running heavy workflows. Chassis temperature is 34 Celsius at most by the vents. Here is a list of the target audience for the Lenovo ThinkPad P16 Gen 2. Creative pros, product designers, architects and engineers, data scientists, game and VR developers. The P16 has an integrated Intel UHD Graphics 770 for basic graphical tasks. This is backed up by the dedicated GPU in the NVIDIA RTX 3500 ADA generation with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. The 3500 ADA is a high-end professional GPU based on the ADA Lovelace architecture. Hardware-wise, it's a cut-down GeForce RTX 4070 GPU with 40 ray tracing cores and 160 tensor cores. TGP is rated at 60 to 115 watts. The 3500 ADA GPU won't have a problem running most AAA games at 1440p high settings. Here are some gaming samples.
Gen 2 has several security features to keep your data secure. A fingerprint sensor integrated into the power button, a discrete TPM 2.0 enabled security encryption chip. The webcam has a ubiquitous privacy shutter. Next to it is an IR sensor for Windows Hello facial recognition, bottom cover tamper detection, and the Kensington Nano security slot. A smart card reader is used for login authentication. The P16 has an integrated 94 watt hour battery. In balance mode, 50% brightness, medium to heavy office type work. Battery life is around 5 to 6 hours. In balance mode, 50% brightness, watching video playback. Battery life is just over 5 hours. In best performance mode, 50% brightness, running CAD work. Expect around 2.5 hours battery life. Lenovo have included a 230 watt slim tip power adapter to charge a P16. It supports rapid charge, charging the battery to 80% in 1 hour. The good, the bad, and the really bad. So strong. The P16 is built like a tank to withstand a few knocks. The chassis is solid and well put together. The display lid has a tiny amount of flexing if you apply decent pressure to it, but provides excellent protection to the panel. Good inputs. The keyboard on the P16 is one of the best on the market. Brings back good memories of the old ThinkPads before Lenovo started tinkering with it over the years. The touchpad is good to glide on, and there's always the track point if you prefer that instead. Useful upgrades. There's plenty of memory and storage upgrades on the P16. For the majority of users, the one screw to open a small service hatch is enough. For others, the remaining slots can be found underneath the keyboard. Only gripe is, it's very convoluted compared to its main rival, the HP ZBook Fury, which has one sliding maintenance cover to get to everything. Cool running. The thermal cooling on the P16 is excellent whatever is thrown at it. At maximum load, the chassis only gets up to 41 Celsius, 105.8 Fahrenheit, to 47 Celsius, 116.6 Fahrenheit at most. The underside stays under 40 Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit. No RJ45. For a huge and extremely expensive laptop, Lenovo could have easily added an Ethernet port, even a 2.5G one that's becoming more common, especially if you're working with large CAD or 3D files over the local network. SSD storage. When the P16 weighs nearly 3 kilograms, it only offers two SSD slots. Its nearest competitor, the slightly smaller and lighter HP ZBook Fury G10, offers four SSD slots for storage up to 16 terabytes. That's big. The P16 has a rather large and heavy design relative to the competition. It's not one to move away from the desk too often, even to work from home expensive. The P16 Gen 2 pricing starts at just under £2,000 plus taxes or $2,514 for the A1000 GPU to the top of the range model with all the bells and whistles plus the super fast NVIDIA RTX 5000 ADA GPU for an eye-popping £6,316 or $7,937 before taxes. There's healthy competition in the high-end mobile workstation category. What are the alternatives to the Lenovo ThinkPad P16 Gen 2? In no particular order, here's some to consider. HP ZBook Fury G10, Dell Precision 7680, MSI Creator Pro Z16 HX Studio A13V, HP ZBook Power G10, Lenovo ThinkPad P16V Gen 1 Intel. The ThinkPad P16 Gen 2 does a lot of things right as a flagship mobile workstation. Faster performance from the Intel HX processors and NVIDIA RTX Ada Lovelace GPUs. Great thermals to keep things inside cool running. The display is a star performer with 165Hz refresh rate, a bright and crisp panel to work on comfortably all day. The keyboard is brilliant, backed up by a smooth touchpad and useful track point. Its solid design is built to last. However, there are a few weaknesses. The chassis is stupidly big and heavy in dimensions when the competition is slightly lighter and slimmer but packs more inside. Four M.2 SSD slots in the ZBook Fury compared to two slots in the P16. The touchpad could have been a tad larger and made of glass. The speakers and webcam for the expensive price tag should have been better. The deal breaker for some is the lack of a RJ45 Ethernet port. If you're going to remove this, why not use Wi-Fi 7 as standard for your connectivity card? There's not even a 5G WAN card option, only limited to 4G LTE. Its nearest rival is the exquisite HP ZBook Fury G10, offering stronger and easier to upgrade options in a neater package. If you can live with its faults, the Lenovo ThinkPad P16 Gen 2 packs a strong punch in the flagship mobile workstation category, as long as you don't move it often. What do you guys think? Leave your comments and discuss below. Hope you guys enjoyed the review of the Lenovo ThinkPad P16 Gen 2 mobile workstation. Please click on the like button if you enjoyed this review video, and subscribe if you would like to watch more of our tech videos. Thanks for watching. Cheers.